I'm Kathleen Henderson from Roots and Boots, and this video is all about our homemade DIY cold frames that we installed right on top of our existing raised beds here in our kitchen garden. My goal is to grow greens as far into the winter or even all the way through the winter if possible, and so I am experimenting. Last year, we built the cold frames. I forget when exactly, it was in November. I just remember that by the time they were finished and ready to be installed, we had already lost our fall greens due to several hard frosts. So this year I'm excited that we got the cold frames on. You can see lots of little spinach growing here. This chard has been growing all summer. It was my early summer planted chard and then this spinach I just sowed for a fall crop. And I'm curious to see how far through the winter these greens will take us. Over here I have a second cold frame where I'm growing three types of lettuce. This is all fall planted lettuce and I've already been harvesting it as you can see. That's bronze arrow lettuce down at the end. Here in the middle is Crawford lettuce. And then down on this end, they're so small you might not be able to see many of them. I have little baby Jericho lettuce seedlings emerging. I'm gardening in zone 7A in Northern Virginia and it's currently mid-November. All of these greens would probably still be okay without any protection. We've had several frosts, uh, multiple below freezing nights, spinach and chard and kale also they all hold up really well during frost, but after suspended periods of frost or even snow, they will start to shut down a little bit. They'll shut down their production. They won't die, but they won't be giving you a continual harvest of fresh greens. Lettuce is a little more cold tender, meaning it also does like cool temperatures, but when you start getting hard frost, lettuce is out. So growing with cold frames can help to extend your season and give you access to fresh greens longer, farther into that cold temperature period. I'll go ahead and point out a few features of these cold frames that we built, and then I will show you how my husband and son built the cold frames in case you would like to build something similar for your garden. So these latches, you might be able to think of something different or better than we did. They are definitely a two-handed open since I'm holding a camera with one hand right now. Um, I can't really open it with one hand. It requires one hand to kind of pull down on the frame and then the other hand to unlatch this. But here on our farm in my kitchen garden we have really high winds that come down. It's like we're in some kind of wind tunnel here and these winds will whip up and we learned this the hard way. They will take the lid of these cold frames right up and over and snap the hinges. So we had to get really secure in our latches. So this latch is part of that security measure. Another part of the security measure is a strong, sturdy chain here that connects to the box and then to the lid. And that is so when these lids are open, if we happen to get wind while the lid is open, Again, we were finding that the wind would whip the lid back. And so we needed, we had a smaller chain before and it wasn't sturdy enough. So we had to upgrade to sturdier chains that can keep the lid secure if we get wind. Ideally, if it gets windy, we close the cold frames, but you know how it goes. Sometimes it just doesn't happen that way. So the chains are another added security measure. When the weather is nice or if it's raining and I want my greens to get some rainwater, we'll open the lids and prop them with, this is just a wooden garden stake. We have also experimented with putting a um, hook on the stake that we use and then we latch it like this. Again, that's just another security measure to prevent our lids from getting whipped back by wind. So now let's take a look at how my husband and son built these amazing cold frames and how you can build one too for your garden. Here's a quick overview of the materials you'll need for the project. I will show these in more detail as we go step by step, but you'll need transparent plastic for the lid, one one by three, a few two by fours, two two by twelves, and one two by eight, deck screws, 
other miscellaneous hardware that I will provide more details on as we go through the steps. And you'll need a drill, a skill saw, a T-square, a measuring tape, a pencil, and wire snips. It's important to build the cold frame on a flat surface. The first step is to cut the base of the cold frame, which in our case is two by 10 in order to match the size of our existing raised beds, two feet wide or deep by 10 feet long. We used two by 12s for the back and sides of the cold frame, and we used a two by eight for the front. So here you can see my husband and sons cutting the pieces to the sizes that we needed to fit on our two by 10 boxes, which is roughly two by 10. For this step, they used a T-square for measuring, a skill saw for cutting, and of course, a pencil for marking where to cut. So on the sides, we have two foot lengths cut from a two by 12. And on the back, there is a 10 foot length cut from a two by 12. On the front, there is a 10 foot length cut from a two by eight. In order to make an angled lid like we used on our cold frames, you simply draw a straight line from the back to the front to create that angle. To draw the straight line, it's helpful to make a mark where that front board hits the side length. And then of course, you will use a saw to cut along that line that you drew. are ready to go ahead and attach the four sides of the base of the cold frame. We recommend three inch deck screws for attaching the frame at each corner. Two screws at each corner. It's a good idea to make sure that each of the two pieces that meet up at any given corner are completely flush with each other before you drive in the screws. After securing all four sides with two deck screws at each corner, we added additional stability with a galvanized angle bracket on the inside of each of the four corners. We used small wood screws for this step. Next, it's time to measure and cut the pieces for the frame of the lid using two by fours for the outer perimeter of the lid and a one by three for the centerpiece. We made our lids with a slight hangover in the front to make it easy to grab the lid in order to open the cold frame. I'm jumping ahead a step in order to show you a quick side shot so you can see that overhang in the front. Use a hammer to slightly bend two of the metal plates. These are six inch zinc plated mending plates and we used four on the lid, one at each corner. The two mending plates that sit at the top corners of the frames are the ones that need to be angled just slightly. And then the remaining two mending plates that go in the bottom corners of the frame can remain just as they are. And again, we are using small wood screws to secure the mending plates to the two by fours. After the lid has been secured at all four corners with a six inch mending plate, then it's time to attach the lid frame to the base of the cold frame. And we're going to do that with these three and a half inch hinges, three hinges per box. We measured in about 12 inches from the end of each box to place the two outer hinges. 
and then the third hinge is centered between those two hinges. And once again, we are using small wood screws to attach the hinges to the base and the lid of the cold frames. All three hinges have been attached. It's now time to add the center cross piece on our lid. This is a segment of one by three, which is secured with one screw at each end. This piece will serve to support the plastic that will go on top of the lid in the next step. The clear plastic piece that we used on the lid of our cold frames is called Sun Tough Polycarbonate with dimensions of 26 inches by 12 feet, which was just perfect for our 10 by two garden beds. To add this plastic piece to the lid, we literally just screwed it in to the wooden frame. We are using hex head self-drilling screws. They are number 10, 5 8 inch. And we're just going along each side using a screw every so often to hold it in place. And since the plastic piece is a little longer than the size of our garden beds and our cold frames, we have a little excess to trim off at the end, which we did by using wire snips. We also attach the plastic to that wooden cross piece. The final step will be to add a latch on the front of the box, but at the time that my husband and sons built this box, we didn't have a latch ready. So here you see them carrying the cold frame up to our kitchen garden to try it out on one of our raised beds. When they got up there to the garden, of course we realized that our drip line was in the way, so we had to pause and remove a section of drip line at the end of our garden bed so that we could position the cold frame right on top of the wooden raised bed. In order to secure the cold frames to the raised beds, we used an additional four of those six inch zinc plated mending plates. My husband Greg says this step might not be entirely necessary because the cold frames are so heavy that he thinks they would probably stay in place without this added stabilization. But just to be safe, we added the plates. We have a number of dogs, cats, children, farmhands, and we didn't want anyone knocking the cold frames off the garden bed or damaging any of the plants. As a side note, these plates are very easy to remove when spring rolls around and we're ready to take the cold frames off the garden beds. This is the point at which my husband attached the chains to the sides of the cold frames. Again, keep in mind that these chains are the smaller ones that eventually were replaced with larger, sturdier chains. And finally, this is a double bolt snap. It's four and five eighth inches and then it attaches to an eye screw at either end. You can also see how we experimented with attaching a hook and eye screw to a stake so that when we have the lid propped open, we can kind of secure it to that stake. We've had mixed results with that and honestly have kind of abandoned that but it definitely did add an extra little measure of reinforcement, especially in the event of winds. And that is how you can extend your season using cold frames and how you can build your own cold frame for your garden.